Gerald. What's up? What's up, birthday boy? <laughs> hey, how's it going? How are you feeling? Uh, pretty good now. Um, I mean, it's been a couple minutes since your fight. How'd you feel about your performance? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, just felt tired in there. I don't know what it was. You know, the nothing had nothing to do with my preparation. My preparation was great. My team was great. My camp was great. Uh, you know, some days you show up to work and stuff's just not clicking. And unfortunately for me, that involves getting into a fist fight. So it's a little more evident when I have a bad day at work. But can't say it was a bad day because I still won. I figured it out. Uh, started slow. You know, I I knew after those first two, I definitely didn't have those, and I had to turn it on and get it done. And that's what I did. Going in that third round, and your coaches were telling you like you had to you had to go for it. I mean, were you willing to go out on your shield to, to get that win? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, from the jump, I was just. I'm sure they looked like the ugliest punches on earth, but I was going forward trying to make something happen and get a hold of them because I knew it was all or nothing. And, you know, quite honestly, I probably should have been doing that a lot sooner, but, hey, better late than never. That's awesome. Um, I mean, you got my vote, but, I mean, I think you pretty, pretty much locked up uh, comeback fighter of the year. Do you, do you agree with that? I, I'll take it. <laughs> um, I mean, just kind of – Reflect on that, you know, I mean, last, this time last year you were coming off two knockout losses and then, you know, you start this year with this mission and then your second fight, you get the big upset uh, and then you get this third win. I mean, just kind of reflect on that. Yeah, I mean, it, MMA is a crazy, <laughs> unforgiving sport, man. Anything can happen. You know, I got uh, I got clipped pretty good in my fight with Heinish and then after that I got put out pretty bad. Um, and I mean, that one was... That was kind of a, a scary one to watch for me later on because I saw later that I was up in the cage and everything. I didn't wake up till I was back here somewhere. So like that whole thing, me standing there, I don't remember none of that. So that's when I was like, okay, I need to take a break, make sure my head's good. Credit to the UFC, they they had no problem with that. They're like, yeah, get your head right, and make sure everything is functioning. Uh, and that seemed to do the trick, you know. It got my head square on my shoulders. I knew I still had a lot of really hard work to do and just kept my nose to the grindstone. When would you like to get back in there? Uh, I'd like to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I know that doesn't really matter to the UFC that much, so we'll see what happens. But if I if I got to pick, I would probably wait until like late April, early May. But you know, my job is uh, to get into prize fighting, so we'll see what happens. Do you, do you have anybody that, that you would like to fight? That man, it's my birthday. Christmas is in a week. I ain't thinking about none of that stuff right now. I'm just <laughs> I'm just enjoying the moment. Awesome. And then um, finally. This is kind of silly, but when do you, how do you decide if you go in with a beard or no beard for, for a fight camp? So uh, usually I go in with a beard. One time I shaved it off because I knew the commission had, uh, I think it was somewhere, some different country. They had a weird thing with the local commission that you couldn't have it at a certain length. So I said, screw you, I'm just going to shave it all off then. Like, you're not going to tell me to have a, a small, short beard or something. And then um, the last one, uh, my son had just been born. I was like, oh, I want him to at least, you know, get used to my actual face before it gets to be wintertime in Wisconsin and I got to get a little more uh, heat and insulation going. So that was the reasoning for those two. Congrats. Thank you. You mentioned wanting to take a little bit of a break. Uh, what's the reason for that? Just tired or do you have something planned during that time? Uh, well, so the biggest reason is that I have to fight people all the time to make money and it hurts. <laughs> So I want to take a little break for that. But no, in all seriousness, I do have my school, uh, grappling school, I want to open up um, around like mid to late February. And I want to get that going for a couple months before I just, you know, have two classes. I'm like, all right, guys, I got to go fight somebody. See you later. And I've been asking everybody what their New Year's resolution is. I'm wondering if you have one you can share with us. I hadn't thought much past uh, getting through my fight, so I got nothing for you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Congrats on the win. Uh, BJ Penn was tremendous on the, on the ground. Chuck Liddell had that knockout power. Gerald, you, you personified the phrase, take him into deep waters and drown him. What is it about the, like, you know, that buzzer beater, that the fourth quarter about you, that that's where you thrive? Uh, man, I don't know. I, I don't know that I'd necessarily word, word it that way myself, but I'll, I appreciate the compliment, and I just, uh, I know how bad I want it, and I know... You know, like I said before, sometimes I put myself in a corner and I try to, you know, shove a square peg through a round hole, which it ain't always the best way, but 
I know how to make it work, and that's just where I find myself a lot of times. That's perfect, man. And uh, the school, let's circle back to that. What are you planning to open? What's going on? Where at? Uh, so that'll probably be in Harlan, Wisconsin. It would be um, primarily to start off with a grappling school, you know, start out slow, maybe uh, three, four days a week at first, uh, have an adults program and a kids program and just kind of slowly work up from there. I'm not aiming initially to train fighters necessarily because I'm still uh, coaching the fight team at Rufus Sport with Duke Rufus. So, um, but if it ever leads to that, it leads to that, but that would be years and years down the road. But that's great. And when did you, you know, this is like giving back to your community. What started that thought process? Or is this for the longevity to be like, I can't fight forever. This is going to be my retirement plan, if you will. A uh, little bit of both. Uh, I mean, you know, I definitely, I really enjoy the sport and I really enjoy participating and coaching. Um, you know, I've been helping out with the fight team for a little bit now. And it's something I have a real passion for. And I feel like I can really you know, contribute a lot in that arena because, uh, you know, I don't have necessarily some of the jiu-jitsu accolades that some of the other coaches have, but uh, I can prove that I can do it in fights. And I have a little bit different perspective in that case, and I think that brings something unique to the table. And, um, you know, even before this, I was going to be a music teacher. So not exactly nothing to do with music, but I'm still teaching, so I really enjoy that. Right on. Well, best of luck with the GM3 Academy, and congrats on the win, my man. Thank you.